everyone. Thank you for joining us for Press Row. Joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Boys basketball postseason underway Tuesday and Wednesday with sectional semifinals all across the region. Of course, the Southwest District a little ahead. There are intersectional finals in the district semifinals already. Which top seed are you most confident, or top seeds, we'll let you choose multiple answers, is going to make it to districts? I think it's the same ones we've been talking about all along. We've been Lima talking Senior, about all along. Lima Central Catholic, uh, I got them going through. In I, Lakeview. I'd say uh, Defiance is pretty much a lock, too, to get to district. So they got to play Kenton again. And anytime you play somebody a second time, and as we saw, Defiance tripped up against Shawnee in the regular season finale. That's they true. weren't completely healthy against Shawnee. But I, I wouldn't necessarily put Defiance as my 100% take it to the bank lock. My 100% take it to the bank lock, you didn't mention. Liberty Benton Eagles up in Napoleon, ah. the Napoleon district. They play the winner of Patrick Henry and Delta, and everybody in that Napoleon district was afraid of Liberty Benton, and they went all to the other sectional. So <laughs> LB, they play the winner of Delta, Patrick Henry, and then they'll play the winner of P P Paulding Tenora, which will take us to our next question, too. So they got a pretty easy road to section. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think LCC, the teams you mentioned, Lima Senior, even Defiance, I think we'll see them at, at districts, not expecting no any major upsets, it. but... It's why we play the games, of course. And one of these teams that we're going to talk about now might have something to say about. Which five seed or lower do you think will make the district tournament? Paulding Tenora. That's a 5-6 game in the sectional championship. So yep. either a 5 or a 6 <laughs> wow. will be in we're that district. Wow. Yes. Wow. Paulding Tenora. That's why he makes the questions, folks. <laughs> I'm going with Bluffton. They are a 6 seed. I think they've got a chance to finally get some karma go their way. They've had some tough losses against good teams this year. I think they're due for some good fortune. I think they're very capable of getting to the district against Kerry and Coldwater. Uh, I'm going to go with Bluffton if you want a higher seed winning a sectional. I'm going to go with my first choice of Ada. I like the, how this matched up and the draw for them. And they'll take on Minster after their win um, last night. So they'll take on Minster on Friday night, 8 o'clock down at Coldwater. And, you know, Ada is one of those teams where not a whole lot was expected from them this year. Coming into the year, they finish up at 500, and, you know, they're, they're playing solid basketball right now. I think the other team you have to look out for, I'm not saying they're going to get the job done, but I think you got to look out for Elida. Getting right. another matchup with Shawnee, a team that they beat pretty handily at the Elida Fieldhouse just a couple of weeks ago. Turn around after beating Bath on Friday night on three days rest, come back and beat the, Bull and beat the Wildcats on Tuesday night. Now they get a matchup again with Shawnee, and I think that's a favorable matchup for uh, for Elida just based on the size components that will be on the floor throughout the process of the game. A couple other lower seats to keep an eye out for. Wapakoneta, we saw the way they shot the threes against Salina on Tuesday night. If they're hitting from outside shots, they can beat up for Sandusky and move on as well. Another team that perhaps could sneak into the district as a five seed, in the Trojans. If they beat Northview, they could match up with St. Francis. Finley can slow things down, make it a one or two possession game. Anything could quite happen. So Finley is a five seed. He's another team that perhaps could find themselves playing in the district. Tournament. I'm a fan of Bluffton as well, Todd, that you mentioned them. And, uh, you know, seeing that being at the tournament draw when Bluffton was up and Todd Boblett was on a lifeline, so to speak. He hit, didn't have any assistance with him. He was really, really puzzled as to where to go on the bracket. And I really think that they've got an excellent opportunity. they got to beat Kerry tonight, and that's no, no sure thing especially this time of year as we saw one win team in Kenton get a W last night over St. Mary's. But I like that matchup potentially with Bluffton and Coldwater sectional final Friday night. What I like about Bluffton is the fact that they've got five different guys. Any one of them could be the guy in any particular mm -hmm. game. So you really have to prepare for the entire team. It's not like you can go in and throw a box in one or a triangle or two and worry about one or two guys. There's five different guys in that team who could beat you. Hey, guys, isn't Wayne Trace a five seed also? They are. They are. And that Jefferson, well, Wayne Trace has to beat Allen East first on Wednesday, and then they can match up with Jefferson for the sectional title. But that's a team I'm looking at as well. I like Ada. Elida's great. I didn't even really think about Elida. Did Elida play Shawnee in the tip-off, or did, was that no, they, they missed each other? No, they did not play a tip-off. Right, so they just had the regular season meeting, and then uh, and now this will be the Shawnee second. Because beat, Shawnee beat Bath, right? and LCC beat Elida in tip-off, so the consolation right. games were different. LCC played Shawnee in the championship. Right. So this is just the second meeting between yes. Elida and Shawnee, which I think favors the Bulldogs because it's easier to beat a team twice in the season than it is three times. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see how that plays out. And the, the other thing that I like about Bluffton 
is that they shoot the three well, which we, Mark, you alluded to Wapak shooting three well. If you can get hot in one game, you know, you can pull off an upset. So Bluffton might be able to put a run together. Now, which is your favorite tournament site? I, I'm going to assume we're talking about before you get to the arenas. Sure. Uh, before you get to I guess we're Stroll or Savage or Value City Arena. Yeah. I, I always like Ohio Northern. I, I think it's a... Uh, I think they treat us well. I think they really enjoy hosting it, which I think is a big part of it. Sometimes you get to sites and some people aren't really all that excited that they got to be there. I think Ohio Northern really enjoys hosting it. And the uh, what used to be known as the Kinghorn Center it holds a lot of people. And when you get a big game there, you get a big crowd and it gets loud in there. Uh, I, I like going to Ohio Northern. I like the courtside seating yeah. for the press at Ohio Northern. One thing I've never liked about Ohio Northern though is how far removed those stands are from sure. the floor. So it, to me, there's always a little bit of a disconnect from the fans in the stands. Coldwater is one of my favorite sites. You got a nice big press box. They treat everybody good down there. I think Coldwater does a great job hosting as well. I'm a fan of the Elida Fieldhouse too, guys. You mentioned Ohio Northern. That's in recent years. That's become one of my big favorite places because of the courtside seating, the hospitality. You need something, they've got it for you right then and there. If there's Whether it be internet, phone line issues, their, their tech team is right on top of it and fixing it for you. I like Elida just because you're not all the way away from the floor. You're up just right. You've got a great view of everything, no matter what side of the floor you're sitting on. And the atmosphere is always good there at, at Elida, and they take care of the media as well. That's always nice for us media folks. Yeah, as, long as, as long as people don't stand up in front of you mm -hmm. at Elida, because then if, you, if they stand up, you got to stand up. And it's, you know, no jokes about how big we are. It's hard to fit behind those little tables <laughs> that are stuffed into the bleachers. So it's got its drawbacks. Well, at Elida, sometimes we're on the baseline too, which is always a unique perspective. But yeah. aside, aside from where the broadcast position is, I know most people probably don't care about that at all. I, I like the atmosphere in the field house too. That's what I was going with. Big girls games there and then big boys games there as you get into districts. It's always a lot of fun and it always feels more crowded than it probably even you got a field house is one of the bigger venues right it it's the biggest around yeah, it's here the biggest, yeah. Yeah. but oh, yeah. still i mean they they fill it up and it feels like a real big game atmosphere so well i, I think appreciate. alluding to the field house it has that historic feel mm -hmm. when you do a game there when you go to a game there when you play in a game there because since its inception it's kind of been the hub for almost every tournament girls boys different divisions have gone through there at some time so there's been a lot of huge tournament games at Elida Fieldhouse. Now, Matt, this past week you were at Bluffton University, which was hosting high school games. What was that atmosphere like? It was actually better than I thought it was going to be. I was a little worried that they wouldn't fill it up, but luckily Bluffton High School was playing there, and of course, you know, that's less than a mile away. So they had no problem filling that up. Coldwater brought a great contingent from from down in Mercer and Mercer County, and I was impressed. I really thought that was a great venue. I'd like to see more girls and even boys playoff games hosted there because. You know, that's very media friendly, of course, and, and the gym, it's a nice looking gym, and I thought it was a very, very successful outing there. All right, guys, let's talk girls' hoops now. Which local team has the best chance to make it to Columbus? I, I like Columbus Grove's chances, to be honest with you. And, you know, we always talk about Division Three. sometimes can be a little easier road in boys, and maybe in girls it, it can be as well. You know, and then in Division Four, you've got you know, if the chalk holds, we've got Ottoville Arlington for a district championship, and you got to feel good about whoever wins that. Probably has got a good chance to get to Columbus. Well, in Division Four, you've got St. Wendelin sitting out there. Right. Oh, that's true. St. Yeah. Wendelin is going to be a, a big force once again in Division Three. I think Grove's got a, certainly a good chance to get to the regional. But on the other end of that other side of that regional bracket, you got the top-ranked team in Ashland Crestview as well as Afrocentric coming up from that other district. So that would be a big stopping point for uh, Grove. In Division Two, Ottawa Glandorf, they're going to face either Toledo Rogers or Oak Harbor if they get there in the regional final. So those, those are kind of the looking down the road type of matchups. I think you got to talk about Fort Warmie certainly has a great chance of getting to sure. Columbus out of the Southwest District. Thanks for taking my time, too. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> the other thing it points out is maybe there isn't an overwhelming favorite to get to state. There, there are some tough matchups coming at regionals mm -hmm for all of the girls teams that we would call in our area against girls teams that are outside the area. So it, you know, if, if the chalk holds in some of these matchups, maybe we don't get anybody to state. That'd be a rarity for sure. Yeah, if Arlington and St. Wendelin should meet up, 
That's going to be a great match in the post between those two big girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Sierra Nichols. I, interesting, watching Arlington in their sectional final game against Pandora Gilboa, they got down in that first half, and I don't know that they had faced adversity like this except in maybe one of their – I think they have one loss on the season. Um, yeah. I can't remember whether well, they, they lost. Well, they had the, the overtime game against Columbus Grove as well. Right. So, well, yeah. the other interesting thing is how they put themselves on the, yeah, the first game, bracket right, yeah. instead yeah. of taking the bye. I thought that was interesting. And then they got a bit of a scare. So, But, but you see that all the time down in the Southwest where teams will – the top-ranked yeah. teams in the Southwest don't want that bye. They want to play the extra game and not get that <clears> day <throat> off, not have the rust build up, right. get an easy victory early on and build some momentum in the postseason. Well, Arlington went on a 30-6 to six run and, and took control of the game. But when Pandora Gilboa was leading, there was great energy in the gym. I think maybe that was good for the Lady Red Devils to experience that so early on. And we'll see if they can make their run towards Columbus. All right, let's finish with the NBA. The second half of the season now, the All-Star break is behind us. Should Cavs fans be worried? And the only reason I say that, I know, you know, they're currently in first place in the East, is they got to win a title here. This is, you know, LeBron window is closing. Yeah, I think look how it putrid is. Putrid he played against the Pistons the other night. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, the good news the is <laughs> in the playoffs, they space it out so much that you get like a week off between games. So the back-to-back -back dud that they laid at home certainly is a, a bit of a concern. But uh, of more concern is how, how does this team fit together? Are they ever going to get it figured out? Is Kyrie going to get a spider bite? I mean, it's it just was bed bugs. Whatever. And here's the one thing you can be guaranteed will happen if Cleveland faces Oklahoma City in the finals. They're not Cavaliers staying at the aren't Hilton. staying in the Hilton. No. I mean, come on, Kyrie, suck it up and play. I mean, to me, there are a lot of question marks about this team. I don't think they're all that mentally tough. I think LeBron is running out of gas quicker than maybe we thought he ever would with all the miles and minutes he's put in. Does this team have the mental fortitude, the chemistry to win the NBA title? I don't think they do. You mentioned the miles and minutes. There was a thing that came out just this afternoon on Wednesday talking about LeBron being the one who's played the most minutes since 2003. Take into consideration, too, he's got Olympic appearances yeah. Yeah. on those legs yes. as well. And there's been talk deep of this year. Deep playoff run after deep playoff yep. run after deep playoff run. I hope. I hope this year, as much as I want to see him play in the Olympics, I hope he doesn't play in the Olympics. He needs to rest his body. And, yeah, he's taking care of himself, and it's completely different than what it was 15, even 10 years ago as far as this, the nutrition and the acceleration process of taking care of the body and re-energizing, so to speak. But I wouldn't be surprised if maybe LeBron even takes a couple games here and there between, the end of the se between now and the end of the season and takes the night off against maybe well, like an Orlando or somebody. Last year, he took that two weeks off. Right. Now, in fairness, LeBron did say on Wednesday afternoon that he feels as good, if not better, than he did at this point in the season a year ago. So, you know, we're jabbing a little fun at his performance against the Pistons, but LeBron certainly isn't worried about this at this point in the season. So, But, the, you know, the other problem with taking the game off or a week off or whatever is it goes back to my original point. Where is this team? Right. Mm -hmm. And they just made another trade. They don't. They have no chemistry. They just changed coaches a couple of weeks ago. LeBron's they, not the coach anymore. They need to play. They need to play together. Get this thing moving in the right direction. More, you know, being on top of the East is no great thing. Uh, that's not a big deal. They need to be playing well over the next few weeks and into the playoffs. I mean, you can't like their chances. Do you guys know, and you may not, I don't know the answer to this question, the last time a team fired their coach midseason and won the NBA title, <laughs> or if it's ever happened? I think the Lakers, Lakers did it in 79 Lakers, with Paul Lakers did, Westhead. They fired Westhead and brought in Riley and won the, won the title. Yeah, I can't imagine it happens been very often. a couple years after 79, though. So it might have been 81. Yeah. We're talking 30, you know, I can't imagine. 30-plus years, yes. I can't yes. imagine it happens it, very often. It happens no. in hockey. Certainly hockey no happens times. all the time. Yeah, hockey, yeah. they'll change their coach right. to drop of the hat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ten yeah, games left in the season. You they, lose the opening the game of the Stanley, yeah. Stanley Cup Finals, they'll fire you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, hockey does it routinely, but it's been a long time for hoops, and I don't know if we – could we come up with one the NFL maybe? You, you see very rarely do you yeah. see yeah. a mid-season coaching mid change in the yeah. NFL. I yeah. think there's been a handful in Major League Baseball. But. Yeah, baseball it'll happen. But yeah, Jack it, McKeon was the last yeah, one in baseball. Yeah. There you with go. The Marlins. It's not a recipe for winning a championship. That was my point. point. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, we'll see how the Cavs play it out. They've got some time. You know, finals aren't until June, and we're only in uh, the end of February here. Thanks, guys. That'll do it for this week's Press Row. Enjoy your sectional final games this weekend for boys basketball, and we'll be right back here next week.